Hey everyone, Isaac here. Quantum computers are super cool, and most people who agree with that statement probably haven't used one all that much, if at all. Maybe you don't even know that they really exist and are legitimately usable, at least my parents don't. In this video, we're gonna show you how you can use a real quantum computer, yes, a real one, with some new features from Amazon Bracket, all within Penny Lane. Simulations of quantum circuits are really valuable because they let us test out our programs before running them on real hardware, which can be quite a high stakes affair. You don't want to run the show with a real live audience before having practiced first at least a few times. Otherwise, you wouldn't have caught that huge big gap in your script. While Penny Lane is predominantly used to simulate quantum circuits, it's actually hardware agnostic on the back end. So Penny Lane is friendly with pretty much any piece of hardware that's cloud accessible. So for instance, you could use something like Amazon Bracket, which is a cloud service provided by AWS that lets you access a whole host of real quantum computers. Accessing hardware using Penny Lane is actually pretty simple. I'll show you what I mean with one of Amazon Bracket's new features. But for now, here's how accessing hardware works in a nutshell. First, you need to install a plugin like the Penny Lane Bracket plugin. I'll put a link in the description below for where to go to install Penny Lane Bracket. Once you've installed the plugin, when you define a device in Penny Lane, use the QPU, the quantum processing unit, as specified in the plugins documentation. This process varies from provider to provider, but usually just involves you providing an access token in some way. With the device created, you just need to create a circuit and run your code on the device just as you normally would in Penny Lane. Your job will be put in a queuing system, which deals with all the other people clamoring to use the same device you're trying to access. Okay, seems relatively straightforward, and we'll go over a more concrete example shortly. Having said that, you researchers are probably like, okay, sweet, yeah, I wanna use a quantum computer to test out some of my stuff, that's great. But there's a huge chunk of my research or my code that also ties in classical computing elements. So I can't just use a quantum computer and get what I want done. Yep, you're right. And Amazon Brackets got you covered with a new feature called hybrid jobs. Let's say you have some slick new quantum machine learning algorithm that you want to test out on the real deal, a real quantum computer. A quantum neural network itself is purely quantum. You can stick that on a quantum computer in its entirety. Optimizing it, however, is not a task solely for a quantum computer. Classical computers are still kind of top cheese here. So when you submit a hybrid classical quantum algorithm or computation to some cloud service, you need all this to be sorted. Run the classical stuff on a classical computer and run the quantum stuff on a quantum computer. And this is exactly where Amazon Bracket's hybrid jobs feature comes in. Not only does Bracket let you access a whole bunch of quantum computers, but now with a few extra lines of code, Bracket hybrid jobs can orchestrate all the classical quantum jazz. Perfect. Let's see it in practice. Okay, I'm here in a notebook and I'm gonna show you how you can submit a hybrid classical quantum computation or algorithm to Amazon Bracket using hybrid jobs. And just a quick disclaimer, this demo will only work with Python versions 3.10 and higher. And if you ever wanted to know what version of Penny Lane you're working in, you can just do qml.about and it will print out your Penny Lane version and all the different plugins that you have installed. So I'm using version 0.32. And I've already installed the Penny Lane Bracket plugin. As you can see, I've got a bunch of uh, Bracket devices that I can call on. Okay, so we need a, a toy example of a hybrid classical quantum algorithm to submit with hybrid jobs. It just makes sense to use a simple quantum machine learning problem. So this is the circuit whose measurement, which is an expectation value of the poly Z operator, I'm going to optimize. It's just got two rotation gates, an X and a Y rotation gate. And if this is gonna be my, my cost function, then I need to find the minimum value of this circuit. I chose this example just because we know that the answer should be zero pi or pi zero for the angles of rotation in the X and Y rotation gates respectively, because the minimum of the expectation value of the poly Z operator is going to be the smallest eigenvalue of the poly Z operator, which is minus one. Quick mess. Now, I wanna optimize these parameters, so how do I do this in hybrid jobs? First thing we need to do is figure out which real device to use and how to call it. So in bracket, if we load in the devices class from bracket.devices, that will be how we access a particular quantum computer. I'm also gonna import this AWS device class and I'll show you what I need it for in a second. So I'm just gonna pick a quantum computer at random. I'm gonna choose the uh, Rigetti Aspen 3 device. So I just do devices.rigetti.aspen3. All of this will be in Bracket's documentation, by the way. So if you just look up the devices class within their documentation, it should show you how to access all the different quantum computers. Okay, so we'll use Rigetti's Aspen 3 QPU here. I also need to 
to grab something called an Amazon resource name or an ARN, which is a unique identifier that Bracket uses to call up the correct device. So I'm just gonna create a new variable here called QPU device ARN, and I call QPU device dot value. Now I need this AWS device class to check and see if Aspen M3 is available. It might not be available at the time you want to submit your job. Uh, I need to, I also need to create a variable that stores whether or not this device is available. It's just going to be a bool, true or false. So to check and see if the device you want is actually available, you do if AWS device uh, and then you give it the device ARN, and then you call the is available attribute. And I'm also gonna define another variable called device ARN. And if the quantum computer that I wanna use is available, I'm just gonna assign it the quantum computer device ARN. Now, if the quantum computer isn't available, I'm just gonna use a simulator just for the sake of running this demo. The simulator that I'm gonna use if this quantum computer is not available is Lightning Qubit, which is Penny Lane's really fast C++ quantum simulator and its device ARN is this string here. Again, this is all in the documentation. So uh, let's actually see if Aspen M3 is available or not. Okay, well, we're using Lightning. <laughs> I just wanna stress though that like the, the rest of this code will not change had the quantum computer Aspen M3 been available at the time that I'm running this. The code stays exactly the same, just a different device is being used. Okay, we've got our device figured out onto the next step. The job that I wanna submit is just optimizing these circuit parameters. For this to work with hybrid jobs, you need to stick the entire optimization routine inside of a function and we'll call it QPU qubit rotation hybrid job. We need to do this so that we can wrap our entire procedure with the hybrid jobs decorator. Okay, so a couple things here. I'm gonna import the hybrid job function from bracket.jobs and I'm going to import the log metric function from bracket.jobs.metrics. The hybrid job function is going to be the thing that I decorate my uh, entire procedure with, and log metric will keep track of things that I want to keep track of during my optimization routine. Okay, so let's create my procedure first. So I'm gonna call my procedure QPU qubit rotation hybrid job. I'm gonna feed it this QPU available flag that I populated up here that says whether or not my quantum computer is available or not. Now, the first thing I need to do in my procedure is create a device in Penny Lane. So if QPU is available, then my device is going to be the bracket.aws qubit device. When creating a device using the Penny Lane bracket plugin, you need to give it the device ARN. Uh, you also need to give it the number of wires. So it's just a one qubit circuit. And since this is a real quantum computer, the Aspen M3 device, I can't ask for like an analytic measurement. I have to query it or measure it many times and average over all those results. So we call the number of measurements shots and let's just do a thousand. Okay, so if the QPU available flag is false, then I need to use Penny Lane Lightning. The string identifier is bracket.local.qubit. Okay, with my device defined, I can create a Q node in Penny Lane. Remember my, my circuit up here, my circuit up here is currently just a quantum function. It's not married or paired with a device. So I'm just going to create a new variable called QNode. And you could create a new function here. You could call it, I don't know, def QNode of params and call your circuit within it. Um, another way you can create a QNode from a quantum function is to call the QML.QNode class, give it your circuit and give it the device. So that's another way you can create a Q node. You don't have to decorate with at QML.QNode. This is another way to do it. Fun fact. All right, and the next step in my procedure is just to write out the optimization. So you need to create an optimizer. We'll just keep it simple and use a gradient descent optimizer with a step size of 0.5. My initial parameters are angles of rotation. I'm just gonna say they're 0.5 and 0.75. And I'm only gonna do 10 iterations. That's actually all I'm gonna end up needing. So to update my parameters, I call the opt.step function, give it my Q node, which in this case is my cost function. I'm just minimizing its output, which is the expectation value of the poly Z operator. And you give it the parameters, which are the angles of rotation. So the thing that I'm interested in tracking as the optimization goes on is the output of my circuit. So I just need to calculate what its output is after I've done an optimization step. Now for actually logging all these things, Bracket has its own uh, logging function that I'll call. 
So this logging function I'm gonna use is called log metric and you just import it from bracket.jobs.metric. So I'll call the log metric function down here. You just give it a keyword argument called metric name. It's the name of the thing you wanna track, which is exp val and the value, which is the thing associated with the metric exp val, which is your circuit output. Okay, and my function, let's just return the parameters. Uh, not super important. This log metric function here is going to be the thing that tracks and stores all of the results from my procedure and I'll be able to call it later. Um, this return here isn't too, too important. Okay, so I created a device in Penny Lane, created a Q node for my circuit, and I wrote out the optimization. Now it's time to use hybrid jobs. Finally! And before I do that, I need to import the hybrid job function, which can be done from bracket.jobs. Now with that available, I can decorate with at hybrid job, and you need to give it the Amazon resource number. All right, now we just have to submit things, and it's easy as calling our function and waiting for the job to climb up the queuing system and see the results. So to run our job, we do qpujob.result. Okay, that finished relatively quickly. Now I know that my analytic results for my angles of rotation when the circuit value is optimized, the circuit measurement's optimized, uh, should be zero pi or pi zero. So it looks like I found pretty close to zero and pretty close to pi. I just have some code here to quickly analyze the results. If you've never heard of pandas, uh, not the uh, animal, the Python library, uh, it's a great data, data analytics tool. So I, I definitely recommend that you check it out. So uh, nothing really crazy here. I'm just gonna run it. All I'm doing is plotting out the expectation value, the output of my circuit uh, as a function of the optimization step. All right, and you can see my results here. Uh, everything happened as it should. Basically, uh, I was able to optimize my quantum circuit. 10 steps is all I needed. Um, and the expectation value of my circuit is pretty close to negative one, which is what we would expect for the minimum value of my circuit. So to summarize, if you have a computation that has classical and quantum parts, you wanna run those quantum parts on a real quantum device and the classical parts on a classical device, Bracket's hybrid jobs feature will take care of all of that behind the scenes for you. And that'll do it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I think it's really cool that we can use real quantum hardware nowadays. So if you're interested in running stuff on a real quantum computer, I'll put some links in the description down below for how to get on Amazon Bracket and start using the quantum computers that they have available. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you know when more of these tutorials drop and I will see you in the next one. Ciao. I recorded that. Let me just redo it, because it's just like, this all is fine. Stop it. Learn uh, demos, hybrid jobs. Dude, <gasps> herbid, herbid, herbid. Hybrid. Work smart, not hard. Ah, why did you quit? Interrupting kernel.